just ready for the <laughs> for the men in black to be outside waiting for us. Well, the cool thing now is in our new studio, we're up on the top and we can look out the windows, these beautiful big bay windows, so we can see them coming. <laughs> right on. <laughs> so when we have Duncan on, we got a little warning. It's a, so Duncan, if you hear me go, oh, ah, code, code 12, code 12, we're out of here. <laughs> Well, it it was frightening. Uh, we, that, that second time we had you on, remember we got all kinds of ear interference and someone was cutting in and out of our line and everything? Yeah, exactly right. And when we were trying to put together the uh, MK Ultra conference in Boston, uh, we did an interview together uh, with a lady there in Boston, but Axe was on the interview with me, but not as Axe, not as... Uh, my counterpart coming forward. She was on the interview as one of the uh, conference organizers. Oh, I see. Yeah. The lady who was doing the interview had a black chopper sitting right outside her window. Oh, my. And I had one sitting right on top of my house at yeah. almost identically the same time. I felt really left out because I didn't get one, but, you know, there's always another time. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so Duncan, how how many revelations have, have you been hitting here lately? I mean, there for a while you were nailing them. I mean, you guys were both apparently helping each other go through these revelations now, and you're learning more and more each time. Uh, what's what's that like now? Is that kind kind of like just hitting you left and right? Yeah, we are, and you know what? It's scaring the hell out of us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it really is. It, uh, um, some of the things that we have put together that we have proven uh, 100%, some, you know, 75 or, or a little less, whatnot. I mean, come on, man. We, we sit down and we start thinking about this, and it's like, holy crap, how deep does this rabbit hole go? Yeah. Yeah. And, and I guess, you know, the, the more things that you, you find, the, the, the easier it will be to find the next ones. Sometimes that's the case, but other times that just... It opens a door to a million new questions, you know, and to a whole new arena, if you will, of this, you know, of things that we were involved in that we, that is so much more than we thought we were involved in. You know, I, we were, one of the things we were called is multi-use subjects, meaning that we were some of the few project people that were loaned out to different projects. And so, you know, it's bad enough remembering the training. It's bad enough remembering the witnessing horrific deaths of children. It's bad enough thinking about the things that you yourself have done. But then when you start to remember that you were sent out on other assignments and other places in other venues that you really don't want to, it just you know, it's it's hard to put all these pieces together because you just keep getting more pieces to the puzzle. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's true. We started out with like a 50-piece puzzle, and then it went to 100, and then to 200, and now it's one of those big, gigantic, thousand-piece puzzles, and the picture we're getting is very graphic. And very yeah, scary. Yeah, I mean, we started, out, we started out thinking, okay, you know, we were part of this program, Project Talent. Duncan was the super soldier. I was the psychic remote viewer. We were partnered. We did a lot of black ops type stuff. Okay. That's mind-blowing enough as it is. I mean, that has me sitting and staring at the wall for hours at a time while my brain explodes daily. But there's more. There's so much more, and that's when it just gets overwhelming. Like we said, this will be our last interview for a long time because um, we have a couple of things that we need to take care of. Um, one of which, of course, is the uh, Light Warrior Academy that uh, we'll talk about a little bit later. <clears throat> but the most important issue that Axe and I have right now is finding our son. Wow. We have a son. You're kidding. No. Wow. Well, there once again. Thank you, Duncan, <laughs> for... Uh, you should see Hugh and I look at each other. We're like, oh, my. 
Yeah, that that's something kind of strange to forget. Well, yeah, they that's really wild that they would do that kind of repression as well. And is your son part of this project as also? Um, more than likely, but we hope not. And our job is to find him and get him back. Wow. If they are looking for him or, or if he's not a part of it, uh, I, can, I can only imagine if he's not part of their program, uh, being a byproduct of both of you, they would want to find this child, and they would be doing some pretty horrific tests and things. So, Well, one of the reasons that, you see, they split us up, and the reason they split us up is that we became too good at what we did, and neither one of our alternate personalities, we, we had gotten to the point to where we didn't follow orders very well. And... We were the best of the best at that time, and they became afraid of us, and they split us up. Mm. And somewhere after that happened, we conceived a child. And, and when did you remember that? Was that just something that was really recent, or have you known for a little while? Or We've known for a long time, but it's only been recent that... There was some proof. Man, Duncan, what a mind-blowing story. It's like we're going deeper down the rabbit hole every week. Wow. Well, it, it, it does. And remember, I'm 50. Well, I'll, I'll be 50 in June. I started in this at six years old. You know, So that's a lot of years, a lot of happenings, a lot to experience. Yeah, and you're still and potentially still being don't used have now. All. But we, you know, we do remember a lot of... The training that we went through together, uh, both you know, physical on the physical side, on the the mental side, the side side, um, and you know, I've said this before, but on the the physical side, failure was not an option. They uh, definitely had little ways to make sure you performed adequately. Man, oh, man. Well, Duncan, we're getting ready to go to break, and I know when we come back, the second half is where we're going to really get deep into some of this stuff, and you're going to let a lot of this out. And I know you had mentioned that uh, this is your last interview for a while because you guys are going to let some some pretty big news out here. We're excited about that. We can't wait to, to break that news to everybody. We'll be back with Duncan O'Finian and Axe. We're going to finish this interview. Duncan, thank you again for being here. Just hang tight with me. We'll be right back after this break. And we're back here on Nightwatch with Hugh McClanahan! Yay! And our two <laughs> wonderful guests tonight. Uh, man, uh, not only wonderful, but mind-blowing, I should say. Duncan O'Finian returning to the show from the Super Soldier Project. We've had him on several times, and I urge everyone to go to the archives at nightwatchradio.com in the audio chamber and uh, check out Duncan's other shows. I've got his other shows up in there, and I urge you to download and listen to those so you can get a backstory on all of this and uh, you can hear the difference what I was talking about earlier with Duncan and, and his transformation and how he's handling all of this and of course Duncan's partner in crime <laughs> Duncan's partner in crime Axe is here also with us and uh, it's been amazing and as we as we were going to break we were just starting to get into the training and how you guys were actually trained together and you're starting to uh, assemble memories of this so let's uh, I'll let you take up there which one you want to do first the one with Corso okay um uh, I know everybody knows David Corso. He was uh, one of the people present in uh, the Cambodia incident. Dave Corso was also a trainer in some of these programs. And one of the things that he helped train us with was long-range shooting. And I'll tell you what, what we did, and then I'll let Ax go into it just a little bit heavier if she wants. I couldn't see the target. The only thing Corso was doing was instructing how to handle a specific rifle. Okay, uh, but I could not see the target, uh -huh. but Axe could. Okay, she would do the jump out of body thing, the astral thing, find the target, see me the information for the target. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's pretty straightforward. I mean, the memories okay. we have are I would be standing by him on his left side with my hand on his shoulder. My body would be anyway. I'd go out, find the target, mentally relay it to him. Um, sometimes I did have to verbalize, too. So I had to be able to 
almost bilocate. In other words, I had to have full 